the use of person-borne improvised explosive devices by terrorists makes the asymmetric warfare model so difficult to defeat. A group of NATO scientists and military representatives are working on technology that could be used at military compounds and airports to make would-be suicide bombers or anyone concealing any other type of threat more detectable. There is no sensor technology that can detect all the threats. For this reason, you need to combine these technologies. The idea behind this research task group is to develop a sensor fusion architecture to improve the overall detection performance of a combination of sensors to detect person-born IDs. Sensor fusion architecture. So how would this work in practice? Picture a military base with people arriving for work in the morning. A possible threat needs to be detected before he or she reaches the gate. People are screened by sensors on the approach for features that could be characteristic of a threat, such as temperature difference, size, and concealed shapes, for instance. Data from each sensor is fed to a main processing unit where it is fused together, so that detections are confirmed in real time. If a threat is detected, the sensors will specify what type of threat it is and where it is. If nothing is detected on a person by the time they reach the entrance, he or she may be screened by the next set of sensors. All the while, the main processor is continuously fusing together feeds from the various sensors, layering up the data, showing anomalies, no anomalies, and any detections. The processor is able to understand that person A has been screened by sensor A, sensor B, sensor C, and so on. If something suspicious is flagged up, security would be alerted and further action would be taken. A similar combination of sensors could be used in public settings, for instance, sports stadiums, or it could be rolled out for national elections, any event where huge crowds of people may gather. What you want is uh, uh, to be able to detect the threats, but not at the cost of having too many false alarms. And the long-term achievement will be to be able to use an easier way to combine this sensor, to take care that the sensor will be interoperable because now, now they are acting as single sensors. We are going to simulate their interoperability for our architecture. At Fort Moore in the USA, the NATO group organized a trial to test nine different sensors to find a way of fusing the output data to improve detection capabilities. Members of industry were invited to join. There are many different technologies here. There's optical sensors and RF sensors. We're looking at things from different perspectives. What everybody is doing here this week is kind of a joint effort between industry and NATO to understand current capabilities for sensing uh, PBIEDs. We're being thrown scenarios blind to us, but known to NATO and to the Army to understand how they would fit in a bigger picture of a potential layered defense sort of scenario. We're also here as industry able to understand how our positions or how our products would work uh, correctly or incorrectly in a given situation. So it's kind of a learning and academic sort of scenario for everybody involved. The purpose of the trial is to assess the current state of technology, uh, both in the U.S. and in, in Europe and in particular all the way around the world and figuring out what is the next step uh, in terms of uh, what are the gaps. The architecture is what we're uh, interested in because not only with PBIDs but with detection in all kinds of IDs there's not one silver bullet in uh, detection. So we want to combine uh, in all the projects, combine different sensors that can be used in different uh, theaters. We can pick the sensor um, which we need the different kind of sensors and we can put them into one system. So the architecture behind that diffusion is really interesting for us. In the NATO group, we want to see how standoff sensors can be used and therefore we need tracks of people moving around in a maybe unconstrained environment or in a constrained environment. And for that we use tracking both from cameras and from LiDAR. So it provides camera systems and we provide uh, detections and uh, re-identification that can be used to 
RGM and target tracks with sensor outputs. This experiment is important because it, it allows us to see technologies that can help defeat person-born IEDs, at least to identify individuals before they're able to detonate. And so from the Maneuver Battle Lab, it's important because we are the Maneuver Center. Um, we train Maneuver Forces, both infantry, armor, and reconnaissance forces. And that's not just for the U.S. Army, it's also for the NATO partners, their armies, uh, because it is a threat. Um, and being able to learn from this experiment and see what capabilities are out there uh, is very important. I believe this technology will save lives in the future, and uh, I think the interoperability with the NATO partners, I think, will save a lot of money and time and save lives. I served 21 years in the Army and I had a combat deployment to Iraq. I saw firsthand the destruction that could be caused by not just an individual person born, but any kind of an IED, an unexpected explosive. If we can control that or prevent that, that just adds not just to our survivability as a force, but also our ability to, to carry on without having that you know, emotional strain of dealing with that.